Hello and welcome to the REIC Corporate Affiliate Series. My name is Pamela Burke and I am the Education Administrator at the REIC. Our corporate affiliate for today's webinar is VLUX. For over 75 years, the VLUX Group is the world leader in the manufacturing of residential skylights and is one of the strongest international brands in the building materials sector. With over 300 patents in skylight design, VLUX is known for product innovation, quality, and durability. For over a decade, VLUX Canada has been ramping up its commercial product line to serve the Canadian market better. Whether your project is residential or commercial, offer your customers the innovation and quality they deserve at an affordable price. For more information, visit vlux.ca slash professionals. Today's presentation is titled VLUX Product, Residential and Commercial, and is presented by Monica Bulis and Russell Ibbotson. A few points of information before we begin. You are welcome to ask questions throughout the session via the chat feature on your screen. These will be collected and given to the presenter at the end of the session, at which time they will be answered. If you experience any technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the chat feature to inform us. Lastly, please be sure to complete the post-event survey, which will be sent within a few days of the webinar. REIC members are eligible for a certificate of attendance. Completion of the survey is required before the certificate will be issued. And now I would like to turn it over to our presenters. Thank you, Pamela, for introducing us. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Hopefully, you have been tracking with us for the last four weeks. This is the last one of our series where we're going to be talking about product for residential and commercial applications. So if this is your first time here, I'm going to introduce myself again. My name is Monica Boulis. I'm the Architectural Project Coordinator at VLUX Canada. I've been working um, at VLUX for almost two years now. I do have a background in architecture. Um, I got my degree from the university. So, uh, really love architecture. Um, a lot of what I've been learning at VLUX in regards to the light design, I have been sharing the last couple of presentations um, and just working a lot with architects and designers such as yourselves with uh, mostly commercial projects as well. And handing it over to Russell. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Russell Ibbotson. I'm the technical manager with Velux Canada. Um, I've been with the company almost 10 years, so a little over half of my career in the industry. Um, I spent my entire career working with manufacturers in the building sector, um, do, doing um, some years with renewable energy, a short period with vertical windows before switching into skylights. Now when I joined VLUX uh, a few years back, um, I started off on the residential side of things. I was managing our builder program um, and architect uh, program for part nine, so low rise construction. And it's uh, in the last few years that I've been managing our commercial program. So with my background in residential, I'm going to be taking on the, the residential part of the presentation today. So with that, I'll ask Monica to do the, the rest of the introduction before we jump into the product. So if you've been tracking with us, then you would know that the first week is when we talked about daylight strategies. So we talked about principles of bringing daylight in from above. The second week, Russell took this on, um, talking about technical considerations, so energy, structural, air and water tightness, complying with code standards. And then last week, we talked about designing for people with daylight and fresh air. Uh, so we looked at um, a bunch of case studies uh, in regards to that. And just to refresh your memory a little bit um, on last week's presentation, uh, we talked about how artificial light is simply not a good enough substitute for daylight. And that's because daylight is fundamentally unique in that we need it for more than just seeing. So we learned that daylight is actually necessary to sustain our biological function. And it's in tune with our biological 24 hour clock, the circadian rhythm. We also learned. Um, that there are incredible benefits to daylight. We found that access to sufficient daylight uh, actually helps improve with learning, with productivity, with patient relief. Um, and then we discovered that, you know, there's not only benefits on a physical level, but also on a psychological, on an emotional level. We have this innate connection to the outdoors, and having views to both the surrounding landscape and the sky changes our perception of the indoor space. 
So it gives us greater satisfaction in the places we live, work, learn, and play. And then we talked about the importance of indoor air quality. So we learned that indoor air has actually been shown to be up to five times more polluted than outdoor air, which is a massive concern considering we're a society that spends 90% of our time indoors. And that is what we are all about at VLUX. So we are so much more than a skylight manufacturer. We actually believe that our communities deserve well-designed buildings. And VE, short for ventilation, Lux, the Latin word for light, this really encompasses our vision of beautiful and healthy buildings with daylight and fresh air through the roof. Um, and essentially, we believe that good design deserves good ventilation and good daylighting. So Velux was actually founded in Denmark in 1942, really established itself in Europe, and then went global. So now we're the global leader in skylights and windows. And what's really cool is that this is a family-owned business. So 80% of the profit is going back to these foundations. And these foundations are funding innovation research, cultural improvements, uh, and studies connected to better daylight, fresh air, and healthy indoor living. So even a lot of um, the information that we as a company are learning is coming from um, such initiatives. And an example of this is that we sponsored VLUX Days in Paris just this last fall, which combined the Daylight Symposium and Healthy Buildings Day uh, events for the first time. And there was about 600 participants. Russell was actually um, there with his family and presented a little bit of self-living in the active house that we talked about last week, if you remember. Um, and this had a host. Uh, a, a mix of academics, architects, policy people, all discussing research um, and best practices. Code. Um, wish I was there. Hopefully, get to go soon. Um, and then connected with that is the daylight site. So you can just plug this into Google, and this should be the first thing that comes up. Um, and this includes videos and talks from the daylight symposium that are posted here. And this also just acts as a really great resource for research on the effects and benefits uh, of daylight. It was really developed to educate designers in the broader design community on daylight. And along with that is the Daylight and Architecture magazine. I know I had mentioned this in the first presentation. And this really goes back to us wanting to build relationships with architects. Um, and engage the design community. So we have 29 issues so far. You can find them online, um, the PDF versions, um, all about daylight in our lives in the built environment. And I highly recommend you check this out. Really inspiring uh, articles, a lot of research. And, and another initiative that we have is the International Velux Award, uh, which we run every two years for students of architecture to explore daylight and design. And one last initiative that I do want to touch on is the Active House. And if you tuned in last week, you know that we actually chatted about this a little bit. And many of the case studies that were presented were actually Active House designs. So this really encapsulates three thresholds, comfort, environment, and energy with comfort being at the forefront. So this is all about designing for people first and then believing that um, designing for the environment and energy will follow. So as we are developing these relationships with architects and designers, uh, we really want to increase our emphasis on education and collaboration. Um, we believe that the design community is amongst the most important people in shaping the way we live. Uh, so we really want to um, get in as a resource of education of how to design well with daylight and understanding that it is measurable so we can therefore improve. So we really want to act as a resource for the design community. All right. Thank you, Monica. So after three weeks of talking about how to des design with skylights, 
the benefits of the skylights, it's now time to talk about product. And often skylights are kind of out of sight. They're up above us. We're not looking directly at them. But the benefits and then the, the what they add to the space can be really felt. And I, that's why I chose this photo to start my section of the presentation. What a great space. This is actually another active house. It's in the UK, um, this one here. Um, but let's let's get moving forward on to product. So um, when I think about um, using skylights, there's really three parts to that. The first part is what we've spent most of the last three weeks talking about. Good design, good placement, you know, flaring light shafts and orientation and length of light shafts and skylight size and patterning with skylights and you know, reflected light off the wall or different things like this. Um, super important. Um, included in that would be the structure, the building code stuff, um, and building science, making sure this is all tied into the building envelope really well. So this is um, you know, where we spend a lot of our time supporting um, um, and when we do the education side of things. Now the second part is the best skylight for the job. And that's really what I'm going to be talking about. Just briefly, we don't have a lot of time to go into any great detail. Of course, you can reach out to us after the webinar in the coming days and weeks, and we can look at a particular application for you to make a recommendation. But that, that skylight, um, choosing the right skylight or the best skylight is, is something that's important. And finally, we have ins um, good installation. Um, we train um, hundreds. Uh, I think it's. I don't think we've broken a thousand um, people yet that we've trained on on residential installs per year. But we have our Velux installer program. Um, our commercial installer program got postponed um, during uh, due to the the pandemic, but it was set to, to begin this spring. But really, so um, we really need all three of these components. You need that good design, the good. Um, the good integration into the building. You need the right product and you need it to be installed right. So back to what we're talking about today, let's go on to product. Um, now when you have a high performance product, and we're not talking about cars today, um, but this is a high performance product. This is well engineered, high performance. Um, you know, it's a good design. It's designed to go fast. You know, that's its purpose. And you know, sometimes good intentions um, you know, they don't line up. So if you don't put the, this high performance car, in this case, in the right application, it might not perform at that high performance level. So I use this example because most of the time that we have any um, issues or disappointments with skylights, it's because the wrong product was used for the application. Um, so there is a couple of little subtle things that I'll, I'll bring in as I talk about product to, uh, to try to give you some recommendations on when you would use one product over another. And in my case today, the residential product line. So let's start with sloped roofs. Um, talking housing, so most of the housing um, that we see today still has a sloped roof on it. Um, these products are looking really at anything above a 312 or 14 degree slope. Um, and we have from, um, from North America, we have our deck mount and curb mount skylights, so skylights. And then from Europe, we bring in um, roof windows. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the differences between those in a moment. Um, but we, our market in Europe is uh, our, our top three out of the 40 countries we're in, our top three are in Europe. And uh, the U.S. would be number four on that list to give you an idea of how big Great Britain, France, and Germany are in our, for our, our annual sales. So we have quite a large variety of roof window products. The final category of products is what the, the building code calls tubular daylighting devices. We call them sun tunnels. We have, we have marketing people on our team, so we, we've got a, a bit of a flashier name. Um, as an engineer, I can poke fun at this. It's obviously an engineer that named these tubular daylighting devices. There's not a lot of marketing charm in that. Um, but let's take a look at uh, first the, the roof windows and the skylights. Now there are the two. The first two um, that you see in the image here are skylights. These are products made in North America, um, and they're primarily for out-of-reach applications. So typically what we see in a Canadian house. Um, the first one is deck mount. Now the deck mount product mounts flush to your roof deck. So it has the frame built in. Um, they're wood frames. 
they're built into um, into the skylight and this mounts directly to the roof deck this is designed to have water flow over it um, so it's a lower profile on the roof which makes it a little bit more energy efficient and just aesthetically it's it's a little tighter fit to the roof now the curb mount is a product that installs on a wood curb that you build on the roof this is we see this more in the western part of Canada and in the northwest in the US um, but this type of product for our application typically is for more low slope roofs um, or for replacement projects now I will say that uh, the only um, custom sized residential skylight we do is the fixed curb mount and um, so we end up using that on some projects again primarily for replacement um, when we get into that side of things uh, but both very good products curb mount a little less energy efficient um, but it uh, is, is uh, design wise with regards to water very good um, water is designed to flow around this product so because it is set up higher off the roof um, the water flows around it as opposed to over now let's look at the European product. Um, I'm sitting about 18 inches from a product that looks very similar to the one you see in the photo there in my home office. This product um, is inset into the roof. So it's actually sunk into the, into the building structure slightly. Um, this uh, um, gives it even more energy efficiency and um, it's designed for in-reach applications. So in-reach applications um, are typically if you're living in your attic. Now, I often use the analogy after World War II uh, in North America we moved into our basements in Europe they moved into their attics and they installed some Velux windows so these these products are designed to be in reach um, I have both in my house um, and I have to say I, I think both products have their application so um, skylights being the North American market primarily we also ship skylights to Japan Australia and New Zealand and a little bit into the Chinese market but they are really designed to be out of reach where those roof windows are designed to be in reach so you can you know they're replacing what would be a vertical window um, in application on a, on a you know a non attic a non sloped wall application um, you'll note from the, the pictures I, I chose to use here both products have interior blinds available um, for skylights being out of reach all the venting skylights so venting meaning operable they open um, all the venting skylights come with insect screens and we have manual venting ones with a, a handle um, if they're out of reach it would be a, a stick with a, a handle at the bottom sort of thing a pole I guess and um, and then we also have um, electrically operated ones which use remote controls um, and I have the the remote control ones in, in my house um, the roof windows get the slide to change here um, the roof windows do not come with insect screens um, when we, we talk about the Europeans um, you know they often tease back when I say why don't you use insect screens I've been I've been to Scotland and I've been to you know France there's bugs there and they say well if you had the insect screen and in, how would they get out um, now some markets do use them I'm told that nearly every window they sell in Belgium will have the insect screen in it um, but you can see it's an add-on accessory it's put on the inside it's just not as elegant so if it's a cottage application you may still consider the skylight now this slide also has um, something that's really neat um, on the the roof window so not available on the skylight but the roof windows have shutters and awnings and if you tuned into week two um, you'll remember that shutters and awnings being an exterior shading device um, are very good at reducing solar heat gain so because these are European products they typically use a very high solar heat gain glass so that in when they want the heating to come into the into the space they can bring it in and then when they want to block the heat from coming in they can use either the shutter or the awning to block that heat um, and that allows them along with their more temperate climate to talk about the energy balance of the of the window so the um, the other part is that uh, if you're using electrically powered skylights you have the option to use what we call active and I have this in, in my house um, the active platform allows you to use your phone to program and open your skylights and blinds 
It also includes a CO2 sensor for indoor air quality and a, um, um, a, an ability to measure temperature and humidity. And with those, they have some matrices that will determine whether they should air out the space. And in, in Europe, this is very common. People will open up the windows a couple times a day and air the house out. Um, Canadians, I find we tend not to do that as much, but it's a fantastic way if you do not have mechanical ventilation, it's a fantastic way to freshen the air in your house. So this, this product could do that automatically, or it could allow you to, uh, to open and close these windows remotely if you're not at home. Um, now, all electric skylights have rain sensors. That means they close automatically if it rains. If you have a manually controlled venting skylight uh, or a roof window, they do not close automatically in the rain because you need to be there to close them. They don't have a motor or a sensor. The, the last part on the, the remotes and the, and the active is that the roof windows we bring in from Europe, we cannot use the remote controls and active for the roof windows. They use a different frequency of uh, communication in Europe. And the way frequencies work is that you have to get military permission to use the frequency. We have military permission for North America to use the frequency used on the skylights, but it's a different frequency coming from Europe. We would actually have to change all the motors and, and carry an inventory of motors in order to do that. And, and the volume demand isn't high enough to do that at this time. Okay, so let's move on to low sloped roofs or you know flat roofs. Um, we do have some product uh, options there. Um, we talked about the curb mount skylight earlier, and that product can go down to zero degrees. Um, we do recommend a five degree slope if you want water to drain off the top surface. And that water draining off just ensures that you're not getting um, white uh, hard water stains on the glass from the rain drying on it. Um, if that product is being installed in a high humidity space, um, for example, a bathroom, um, we would recommend a 14 degree minimum slope because at that slope, that's when um, condensation on glass would roll down the glass and exit through the condensation weepage system that the skylights and roof windows have. So um, anything lower than that 14 degrees, you run the risk of heavy condensation dripping down off the glass onto the floor. Um, for the flat roof windows, we bring these in from Europe. So these are a PVC frame with a, a, a polystyrene insulation inside of those. They have a double pane insulated glass unit. So they have a glass in there with the argon and the low E. Um, and then they also have this exterior cover. Now most of the product that you see on the screen now has a polycarbonate dome. So it's like a combination product. It's like the best of both worlds. It's got the dome to shed snow um, and it's got the, the glass for the thermal efficiency. Um, and then uh, last year we came out with this curved glass design and it's won a bunch of awards. It's a super cool looking skylight and um, that's an option now for the flat roof windows. Now we do have the Canadian testing on the fixed units um, but not the venting units at this time. Um, and then we also have a sun tunnel that's designed for the flat roof for residential. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about sun tunnels afterwards. So the flat roof window is, is nice. You can install that. Um, you can still flare your light shaft. And in this case, they, they put in some aesthetic stepping on that um, to create a little bit of a shadow and a visual effect in, this, in, that, uh, in that light shaft. Um, but these are really high performance and um, skylights. Um, they they um, achieve a very good uh, U-value, the equivalent to what would be a, a triple pane um, curb mount um, with just a double pane window because of the frame design. Um, so they're a very good product. Um, we do this, this product, um, we're seeing a lot of applications in high performance buildings. Um, it's performed very well for air tightness as well as for the thermal modeling. Um, so two things that are more and more on, uh, on our radar as we, as we move towards high performance buildings. Um, the next part I wanted to touch on as we, as we fly through this um, is the, mount, the flashing. Now, when you pick your flashing system, 
you obviously align it with the skylight because different skylights have different flashing systems. But then you have to take a look at your roofing material. And your roofing material is going to determine um, which flashing kit you use and how you're going to integrate. Because you want your skylight properly integrated into your building envelope, and, and in this case being on the roof, uh, into your roofing system to ensure that it's going to be uh, a watertight installation. Now there is a flat roof uh, flashing with the deck mount or on curb mount flashing you can put it right on a curb. Um, I'm going to talk on the next slide about combination flashing. Um, underlayment. So underlayment uh, like a, um, an ice and water shield sort of like a, you know, a blue skin sort of idea. We do put this in many of our flashing kits. Um, some of the flashing kits that do not include it, um, it is available to be added in there. And I would say this is really the, the belt and suspenders approach to flashing a skylight. And um, it was because we initiated it uh, that um, the whole sky market, the skylight market around the world is putting the underlayment in the flashing kits because um, we put it in there because it makes it really hard for an installer to mess up when they do the, the ice and water, the underlayment in the, in the installation. So this is, you wrap your skylight and you can tie that into, uh, into the roof very nicely. A combination flashing. Um, this is only available on the deck mount skylight and the, the roof windows. And on the exterior, it ties all your flashing into one system. So you're not trying to shingle and overlap in between the skylights. Now, on the interior, you've got a, a very thin um, framed wall. So three inches uh, framed and then you've got your drywall is the narrowest. It is variable. You can go wider, but you do have a framed interior between the skylights. Um, Monica is going to touch on the, the Velux modular skylight and we've seen some projects move towards that product because that, um, that distance between the windows is smaller and you don't have the framing. The skylight frames themselves um, come together on the interior. Um, but this is great. I've got a couple of windows uh, com combined like this in my own house. We, Monica's talked a little bit about uh, in the past about the flash about um, light shafts. This image is showing a four-way flared light shaft. Um, but really, what I, what I wanted to touch on here is that skylights, in particular, can be used if you have flat or um, cathedral ceilings. Um, you'd be surprised at how often people tell us, oh, "I can't do a skylight. I've got a flat ceiling and a sloped roof." So you know, there's this distance between the roof and the ceiling. Um, so I just like to point out, it's come up often enough that I feel the need to point out that um, skylights do work with, uh, with flat ceilings as well. In this case, this is an extreme um, with the light shaft, but um, they, they are designed to fit between the structure, whether you have 16 inch or 24 inch on center and your rafters or your, your roof joists, the skylight sizes are designed to fit in between those. Um, so for example, um, on the the deck mount, if you had the S series, or on the roof, on the um, uh, the curb mount product, if you had the 46 series, that's designed to go between um, two spaces of 24 inch on center. So that you're getting close to uh, 48 inches, but you're inside the framing of that. So the skylights are sized for that. Now, of course, there are times where the roofs, maybe the roof, um, and certainly a lot of new homes, you get these really high pitches, 10, 12, 12, 12 pitch roofs. You know, you could fit uh, the floor space of my entire house in the attic of some of these houses. And um, in that case, when you get uh, 6, 8, 10, you know, 15 feet between the roof and the ceiling, you know, that might not be a fantastic application for a skylight because a skylight, first and foremost, is bringing daylight into the space. You know, the ventilation would still work well, but the daylight part, you'd be losing some daylight. So this is when I typically recommend a sun tunnel. And what is a sun tunnel? Well, this is a, the tubular daylighting device, as I mentioned earlier, as the code calls it. This is a type of skylight. This is a device that's going to bring daylight from the roof down to the ceiling. Now, the daylight enters a, a dome on the top, and that dome has flashing to integrate into the roof. And then that light bounces down this highly reflective tunnel. This tunnel has 98 to 99% reflectivity depending on the angle the light is hitting it coming down. Um, so it's really, really effective at 
bringing that light into the space. And rule of thumb, we usually say we want to keep the length of that tunnel below 25 feet. And that's on the 14 inch unit. So you know, that's a pretty good length. You know, most, most applications, you don't have much more length than that. Now, um, then at the bottom, you've got your diffuser. And your diffuser is the lens. So you're not going to get a view through this skylight. You're not going to be able to do ventilation through the skylight. You're bringing the daylight down. And there's some different diffuser materials that we can have in there, but typically frosted is what's chosen. Now, one thing to point out, because in, in most applications where you have um, a vented attic, your insulation level is at the ceiling of the house. And so we do both the air barrier and your thermal barrier is built into the diffuser assembly. So you would have two or three diffusers, just like you have a double or triple pane window, but it would be at the ceiling level. So these become really energy efficient because you um, all that uh, energy efficiency is done you know, on the 14 inch one, you have about one square feet, one square foot of reduced um, R value um, in the ceiling. So very energy efficient, th um, these units. And they can be put in kitchens and bathrooms. Um, in this example, it's showing a hallway with a unit before and after. And you can you can add multiple sun tunnels into a project to bring even more light. Um, we've seen four or five installed in a space before. Um, they bring in a really nice light. You get that fluctuation of light, um, but you get this nice dispersion of light um, from the space. And we have a whole series of products, um, depending on whether um, if your roof is pointing away from the south, you might use a TMR product. If it's facing to the south, a TGR or a TLR, which has a flat glass on it, could be used. We have two types of tunnels. We have rigid and flexible. You get a little bit more light from rigid, and flexible is a little bit easier to install. And then we have a bunch of other accessories. So if you're, if you're considering these products for one of your projects, we can um, walk you through the product options for that. So that was the super fast residential product tour. And with that, I pass it back to Monica. Thank you. And now we're going to go through the super fast commercial product because um, there really is a lot to cover. Um, but now with the commercial product, this is our new commercial logo. Um, it's really showing the variety of buildings that our commercial division encompasses. So you're seeing offices, public buildings, sports facilities, education, retail, the list really goes on. So lots of options with the products that um, I'm about. So we have been expanding our reach in what we are able to offer. So we have acquired a number of companies to expand our product offering. Uh, mostly, I have been working with Wasco, which was just acquired a couple of years ago. Um, and I will be touching on some of the Wasco products in some of the upcoming slides. So this is a quick snapshot of the evolution of our commercial program. So showing uh, from 2006 with our traditional commercial dome, and we have been moving into commercial sun tunnels, dynamic domes, Elux Modular Skylight System, and Wasco. Uh, so this is a pretty good summary of the products that we are going to touch on today. So Russell touched on the sun tunnels for residential applications, um, and they are also really useful in commercial applications. So with commercial, we can do a 14-inch or 22-inch sun tunnel. Um, so this is really useful in areas of larger commercial spaces that may be more difficult to bring light in. So, for example, if you have a drop ceiling or a long shaft application. Uh, so when you're looking at this diagram, you're seeing uh, the sun curve, which is capturing this low light for greater light output. Um, you are able to get this light midday, so it manages the intense and direct midday sun so that the space below it is really uh, bright with uh, comfortable light without glare and it's also able to capture the afternoon sun where you have this low angle sunlight and it curves it down into that tunnel and as Russell mentioned that tunnel is extremely reflective so you're bringing in a lot of daylight down um, and another important element is the thermal break uh, so when placed at the building ceiling insulation level you're really going to improve your energy efficiency have that double lens which is going to 
reduce heat loss and that plastic collar that houses the lens provides a thermal break between the warm and cold section of the tubing. Um, and you're also uh, going to get a warmer tunnel, which is going to reduce the risk of condensation. And there are a number of different elements and components to the sun tunnel. So again, Russell had mentioned this. Uh, one of them is choosing your ceiling diffuser. So you see those three options there. Um, and you are also choosing based on the type of ceiling you have. So if you have a hard ceiling, a suspended ceiling, or an open ceiling. Um, and when you're choosing your diffuser material, each is going to provide a different quality of diffused light. So it's really preference at that point. So this is a stadium in China that has 54 sun tunnels that are positioned around the circle, closer to the center, above where the main court would be. And here you're seeing the interior shot, and there is no electric lighting in this shot. It is just the sun tunnels that are providing the daylight in this space. Um, so that extremely reflective interior is bringing a lot of light. It's diffusing it in the space so that the court is really evenly lit. And you can notice that there's not really hot spots on the floor, so it really is reducing that glare in the space. And then we come to commercial dome skylights. So there's a number of options. This is just a quick snapshot um, of the ones I'm going to be going through. So the first one is dynamic dome that I'm going to touch on. This came in about 2016. And we like to say that we have revolutionized the commercial skylight market with this dome. It's a super innovative product that meets energy, structural, and safety requirements for a lot of commercial applications. When you're looking at the frame, you have that glazing spacer, which is going to reduce cracking and allow for condensation release. Um, it, this is also going to allow for dry insulation, so there's no need for any caulking. You have a 100% thermally broken frame, um, so that's really huge. Um, and you're also going to get a lot of extra water protection. Uh, when you're looking at the shape and the design, that's really going to allow for better stackability. So that's where we also get really competitive with cost because we're saving on transportation. And uh, looking at the dynamic dome, you see that it has quite a unique form and design. So it has this repeating pattern of ridges and ribs that's based on the geometry of an octahedron. That is what's going to give it a lot of strength. And the polycarbon material is making it super lightweight, which allows for really And the formula is also engineered to match the sun tunnel, or sorry, the sun angles during low light periods. So that's your morning, your evening light. Um, and that's going to allow a lot more light indoors. Uh, the dynamic dome is also than other domes, so 30% of the total width is what the height would be, and that is really going to optimize for increased And the standard of what we usually quote is clear smooth over white prismatic, and that prismatic inner layer um, is going to give you 100% diffused light um, in So looking at the different frame options for our traditional commercial domes, um, so you can do single, double, or triple, triple requires a quantity. Um, they can be acrylic or polycarbonate. And these are generally custom size orders, whereas the dynamic domes are standard sizing. Um, and then you can see that the frame uh, can be painted too. And then we come to the energy dome. So this dome uses aerogel, um, which is a NASA engineered insulation that has ridiculous thermal properties and super lightweight. So we're actually able to get a really low value with this. Uh, we're actually able to get as low as imperial. Um, so we can really uh, be super competitive in regards to and just looking quickly at the different accessories that are available um, for the dynamic dome. So you have security screen, um, curbs. 
Monica, I'm and just going to, um, hi, Monica, I'm just jumping in because you, your sound is um, fading out a little bit at times, more in just the last few minutes, but uh, somebody's notified us and, and both uh, Pamela and I have noticed as well. So if you could just adjust your mic if you could. Sure, okay. Right. Hopefully, okay, thank you. Hopefully this is better. If there are any other issues, I'm going to do a better job at tracking that participant chat. Um, so hopefully there isn't any any other issues. So moving on to, excellent, thank you Russell. So moving on to a couple of Wasco products that I want to highlight. So the first is the circular skylight. Um, so these are curb mounted. Um, it has set sizes, has a couple glazing options for double or triple, and there's also the frame finishes that you see at the bottom. Not going to spend a whole lot of time, but just know that it is available if you are looking for a circular skylight. And just want to touch on quickly the SkyMax, um, which is large spanning skylights. So you're able to do 32 square feet for a single skylight. Um, that vinyl frame is structurally reinforced with aluminum, so that's really going to allow for that larger span. And, um, yeah, this also has, uh, well, this one you can also do um, custom sizing, so um, based on the opening that you have, we can work with it as long as it's within that 32 square range. And this is actually showing a warehouse with the dynamic dome. So um, going back a couple slides with that product, just wanted to do a super, super quick case study on this. So this is a warehouse that has 865 dynamic domes, so a lot of domes in this space. Um, and on the left is where the units are not yet installed. So you can kind of see a couple of hot spots here and there. And then on the right, the domes are installed, and you see that you're getting 100%. And now on to the Velux Modular Skylight. So this is a super exciting product in our growing commercial market. Um, the first project we had in Canada was just a couple years ago. Um, so this was designed with Foster & Partners, the international architecture firm based in London. It is the world's first prefabricated roof-like concept, uh, really slim in contemporary design, and displays really high energy performance and technological innovation. It's also a really versatile product, so it can be used in a lot of different applications. And here you see this one module fits all solution. So modular, as the name suggests, in a really simple design, you have this one unit that is able to fit in a bunch of different configurations, so really versatile to work with in a wide variety of buildings. And this could be commercial or residential as well. And this is just a quick overview of the different solutions or configurations that we have available in Canada. And I'm going to touch on each of these uh, in just a few minutes. Um, with some case studies so you're able to see the potential of each of the configurations. So first I want to mention that they can be fixed or venting units. Um, you actually can't tell between the venting and fixed units when they're closed, and that's due to the integrated chain actuator for the venting units. When you are doing venting, um, you can have them every other unit. You actually can't have two venting units side by side. You're also going to have a rain and wind sensor. So this is going to um, allow the system to uh, close automatically in the case of rain or strong wind. And there's also um, the option of having smoke venting, which is going to allow the units to open farther than just venting. We're also able to do roller blinds, so it's a really easy way to protect against heating and solar flare. You can have them integrated into building automation, or you would just so the blinds are on a thin wire, so it makes the design really seamless and quiet. You're getting rid of a lot of visual noise. 
Um, and then there is this option that it can respond to luminosity and temperature. Um, and for the most part, we've had them pre-mounted. So when put in the order to have um, blinds, they would be pre-mounted in Denmark usually, but there's also the option, for example, if you're in a residential application where you decide later on that you want blinds, there is the option to have that ordered later on as well. So this is our standard sizing and semi-standard sizing grid. So where you see um, that medium blue, that's the standard sizing, and then that lighter blue is that semi-standard sizing. We can also do custom sizing, so you have a lot of options in regards to the sizing of the units. Um, for standard, we can do 675 millimeters as the minimum width and 1,000 as the maximum width of each unit, and then we can also go up to 3,000 millimeters for the height of the unit. When we are doing a ridge light application, so that's that pitched application, our standard would be a max of 2400 for the height um, but again there is custom solutions so there's ways to kind of work around depending on the project so just really want to touch on uh, the high performance of these skylights because that's really um, a winner here so you have this high insulation performance due to the pultruded fiberglass frame um, you're able to get a really low U value and solar heat gain. So you can do double or triple glaze. Um, and we're able to get down to a 1.2 metric uh, for U value in North America. And we're also able to get down to a really low solar heat gain coefficient, down to 24% uh, percent with our type 11 glass. Um, so with the glazing unit, it can be supplied with uh, variety of improved solar protection, so that's really going to help mitigate the solar uh, Also, really high performance in regards to strength, so that protruded fiberglass composite is really going to allow for longer and slimmer frames and sash profiles. It enables the design of these larger modules. Um, the cladding will just be extruded aluminum that's attached all four sides, so that's really going to ensure water tightness. And then uh, looking at that bottom image where you see that step pane, um, so that outer glass layer is stepped, so that's really going to ensure water tightness, that water is left sa led safely to the roof surface. Um, and then you also have an interior channel and that's going to drain condensation. Another thing to point out is we have NAFS testing on these units. Um, so whenever we have a project in a certain city, we're going to look at the snow, wind, and rain loads in that city um, and make sure with our static loads that whatever the sizing configuration that is used, um, it's going to remain structurally sound uh, in those And with VMS, we are really able to save on installation. So this is where we become extremely competitive. We can be installed up to three times faster um, than other traditional roof light systems. And over and over again, we've heard from many installers that it's super easy, super quick. We actually installed a couple of units um, just as kind of as a, as a test for ourselves, and I don't necessarily think I'm a very handy man sort of person, but I was able to figure it out pretty easily, so I feel that if I can do it, anyone can do it, especially someone um, who is a roofer or an installer. And uh, as Russell mentioned, we did have to put a pause on our training for our commercial installation, but hopefully when we're back and running, we're able to train a lot more installers in regards to the VLUX. So I want to point out that there is CAD and BIM optics available on our website. Our commercial website has a lot of information in regards to the VMS system. So you're able to find this easily, drop them into um, your Revit or your AutoCAD. There's a variety of software that is compatible with. 
and um, there's also available shop drawings and details. So we have the generic ones that you will be able to see in our technical handbook, which you can also download from the website. Um, but also when we are providing a quote, we are going to provide uh, project specific shop drawings that are going to give you the exact dimensions um, of your rough opening, your internal lining width, um, your curb dimensions, all of that information. And if you remember, this might look somewhat uh, familiar from that first presentation. So this is a, a project that had VMS uh, installed and they use the daylight visualizer to conduct some daylight analysis. So just another plug for this software, you are able to find it online and you can use it. You can plug in your projects into the system and really run some daylight analysis simulations and tests. So I'm just going to breeze through some of uh, the solutions so you just have a better understanding of the configuration um, and just even seeing them in realized projects to give you a better idea. So first solution is the long light. So we can do this at a five degree pitch to 25 degree pitch. Um, this is probably the most popular uh, system or solution that we've seen, at least for Canada, really useful for that low roof or flat roof. So this is a project in the Netherlands. You're having that interior shot versus the interior view. So again, really useful for flat or low slope roofs. Um, you're also able to hide it better from the street as we are able to get it to five degrees. And uh, when you're when you're looking at that interior shot between the exterior, you see that exterior, it's a really thick curb, it's eight and a eight and a quarter inches, and that flashing just seems really bulky over the curb, but on the interior it is relatively slim. So on the exterior it seems really bulky and big, but on the interior it's really um, slim and getting rid of that view. And then we have the wall mounted long light, so you can do this 5 degrees to 40 degrees. This is really useful, um, innovative solution for new buildings and extensions or additions. That's mostly where we have been seeing this solution. So this is um, a church that was using 30 modules, uh, long lights and wall mounted long lights. Um, and you are seeing that it there's a really seamless connection between the wall um, from the system. So where it's connected to that roof deck on the lower part of the system, that that top part of the system is connected really smoothly to the wall. North light, so we can do this 25 degrees to 90 degrees. So this actually does allow for the um, possibility of upright design. This is really useful um, even when thinking of um, kind of facing your skylights to the north. And we've touched on this in a few of the presentations that we had. So you're going to prevent glare. You're going to allow the soft light from the north that's coming in. Um, and this project, you 404 north lights and in a school uh, scenario. And it's also designed for installation directly into the sloped roof without adding a secondary substance structure. So you're seeing that in this school here, that four rows of north lights, um, all of them installed just a less than two weeks, so really fast on installation. And looking at the exterior shot as well, how it's integrated into that roof slope. So the ridge light system, we can do 25 degrees to 40 degrees. Um, so here I had mentioned earlier that this is where we're going to max out on a 2400 millimeter height unit. Um, we can go larger, um, though it would technically a custom solution. So standard-wise, we're able to do a four and a half meter span opening. This is a self-supporting solution, so it doesn't need an intermediate structure where that pitch is 
um, you would just build out your curb as you would with any of the other options. This is a transformation of an old railway warehouse. Um, 124 modules in the space that turned into a restaurant cafe. And when you, if you notice that the ridge light pitch is not actually matching the pitch of the original roof. So this is where we start to see the potential of the VMS system. Um, of course, standard would just be on a flat roof and have that pitch system, but we are able to do uh, things like this where it is able to be on a pitch roof and even the pitch of the system can be different than um, the pitch of the roof. This is a project in China, an airport that used over 1,800 units. Um, this was installed by 15 people in 20 days, so extremely impressive on labor and installation. And at the end of the project, their only regret was that they didn't put in more units because by the time they finished, um, it seemed like just a tiny sliver uh, in the airport. So really fast on installation. And if you recall, uh, this project was actually featured in last week's presentation. We touched on the Green Solution House. Um, and this shot was also in that presentation. So you're seeing the ridge light systems. And when you look closely, there is actually the PV that's integrated onto the glass. So we're able to start doing really custom solutions like this. And in this example, um, we would require minimum units. So some of these um, abilities we would require kind of larger projects. Atrium long light. So this is really ideal for construction of larger roofs. So thinking of that long light, you would treat each um, row as its own opening. But that curb, instead of building two separate curbs and they have to be a certain distance away from each other, you're able to bring that, those openings really close together and then just have structure in between. The structure would not be supplied by VLUX, um, but that structure would really be able to reduce the amount of curbs that are, that are built. So generally, we're saying about 400 millimeters um, as that trough space in And this is um, GSV headquarters in Denmark. This had 420 units installed in 15 days. And this covered an atrium space of about 900 meters squared. So massive, massive um, project. And even the way the structure is, um, even though the structure is kind of larger and it's in between each row, um, the way they designed it was really slim so that it didn't um, take away so much of the daylight that was coming in. And the same, we are able to do this with the ridge light, so same exact concept as the atrium long light, but using the ridge light solution. And then this is our most recent solution. So we call it the step solution. So you can either do this with the ridge light or with the long light. And this is when you're able to add rows for the ridge light and for the long light, but you're treating it as one single opening rather than with the atrium, you have to treat each row as its own. Here you just have one massive opening and one curb all around. You would have structure in between each row that would have to be third party supplied, but the structure is much smaller than the atrium, so you're having about eight and And this is a stadium in China. So they were actually the first to create this solution. Um, and they were the first to have it in the station. Stadium. And this is a step long light that is used in a school in Germany. And you're seeing that structure in between of the wood beams, um, much slimmer than it would be with the quick exterior shot just to understand uh, what the flashing look like. And again, less bulky uh, in between the rows than it would be if you would have multiple 
and we can do asymmetrical bridge lights. We can have an atrium made up of different solutions. So going back to um, the versatility of this product, you're really able to do a lot with it. We are also able to do different colors. So color is another aspect of design that's really important. Um, standard is white, but we also have our semi-standard colors, which would be light gray, dark gray, and black. We do have a couple projects where the interior frame is black. We can also do custom color at a premium cost. That is an option as well. We can even do shape solutions that are not necessarily a square or a rectangle. We can have these asymmetrical units um, to fit the shape and the geometry of your opening. And if you remember this project, this DZNE in Germany, I actually touched on last week as one of the case studies. Um, and they had a really neat atrium space in one of the buildings um, where they used a uh, ridge light solution at five degrees with a beam. That particular solution is not available in Canada, but the concept we are still able to do. Um, and when you're looking at that interior, you're really able to see that oval shape. So on the exterior, um, they're just using the atrium standard solutions with each opening as a different size, and then the interior is where they are lining. And this is a page that you would see in the technical handbook that uh, gives a little bit of guidance into some of the potential of these more custom solutions. So you're able to see how they were able to achieve this oval. And another example of a round opening, this is the Sanfi Lighthouse in France. Um, they actually cladded the exterior and interior so that when you look at the interior view, Um, you're able to have a really, really beautiful opening, um, really clean in the design, and this is using the atrium, so if you were actually to use a step solution now that it's available, you would have that structure uh, much more. And lastly, with this product, just wanted to touch on, as I did a couple times, that it doesn't just have to be a commercial application, it can also be residential. Some of the projects that we have been working on in the last couple of years have been residential projects, even replacement or renovation projects. So that is totally uh, an option with this system. And one to conclude there with our product presentation. So thank you so much for joining. Um, if you weren't able to to come to the other three presentations, or maybe you did and you wanted to take some extra notes. The entire series is available uh, on the REIC channel. You can go ahead and check that out. All of them are recorded. And if you are also looking to um, you know, watch more webinars uh, on daylight and design and similar aspects of what we had talked about, please check out our Hub, which is on the website, and you can register for a webinar. We're doing um, one a week, so feel free to register and let other people know if that you are interested. Great, Monica. And um, I'll, I'll add that uh, we're also very open to look at individual projects, um, and we spend a lot of our time consulting with architects and, and trying to make sure that the design community understands uh, the product and the application um, and any other considerations that our experience can bring to, to the table. So um, I've been answering questions in the participant chat as we went. Um, we're a couple minutes over, but if, uh, if Pamela is good, um, I'd open it up to, to any additional questions that, that people may have for, for Monica or myself. Yeah, of course, no problem. If anybody has any questions, please feel free. Go ahead, type them in the box there. Um, we definitely can take a few more minutes. It's not a problem. Okay. Um, read the integrated PV. Uh, to what extent does this affect the level of light passing through? Is it obtrusive and is it available for domestic installation? 
Um, there is, a, we can play around with the density of the PV panels. So in this case, the PV cells themselves are, are opaque. So they would create a light pattern, uh, which is reducing the amount of light that's coming through. That has some play in it. Um, with regards to um, domestic installation, so if that's a residential application, Monica, do we have, is it a 50 unit uh, minimum? on the on the solar still i know at one point um, when i was quoting a project in in Van on vancouver island we were looking at 50 units do you do you know if that's been updated or is it still that much the last time i checked that is the case but i i do know you know sometimes there is a little bit of lenience with denmark so it might not have to be that exact number um but okay. as kind of what we're saying to the public but yeah 50 Okay, um, so we can always look into it. If you have a project, let us know. Our emails are there, although they're, they're hard to read on my screen. They're in blue, but I did type them. If you scrolled up in the participant chat, they're there. Um, next question, um, Errol is asking, why an energy dome? Um, well, the energy dome, um, if you're working with, say, an SB10, if you're on Ontario or um, like ASHRAE 90.1 or just the, the building code or the energy code for Canada, um, they're putting more and more restrictive U values in place. Um, so that's one thing that might be to meet a prescriptive code, um, particularly the, uh, the, the um, building energy building code for 2017 is extremely strict. Um, and, and that'll be updated again uh, in the next year or so. Um, but that, uh, to meet those requirements, you, could, you might need an energy dome. Of course, the other side is, is if you're going performance, um, performance modeling to meet your energy requirements for the building, you may want a high performance um, dome on that. So like, like the same reason we would consider adding insulation anywhere in the building envelope. Um, you know, we start doing those trade-offs, these, these more sophisticated conversations about, you know, do we invest the money in um, here to get the better thermal performance or energy performance or reduce the carbon load on the building, you know, all these, all these considerations. Um, but certainly we, we get uh, projects, uh, typically high performance projects that are interested in, in the Energy Dome product. So very good question. Um, any other questions? I don't see anyone typing just now. So just as, as we, we have a quick minute, and we've got a couple of, most of the people still online. Um, I meant to say this in the earlier presentations, but we do offer a architect discount for personal projects. So this could be your office or your home. On residential products, uh, we offer up to a 40% discount. Um, sometimes we do a little bit more if there's a, a marketing collateral opportunity with it. Um, on commercial product, uh, including VMS, um, and we're doing this with a number of architects across Canada um, who are doing their own homes, um, we're giving a very nice discount. We can't go as high as 40% because uh, the margins on commercial product are much tighter, um, but we can be uh, very generous in helping you get skylights in your own home. Uh, we certainly appreciate. Um, I've got eight skylights in my house, and I'm designing a sunroom that hopefully I'll get permitting for this year to be installed next year with VMS on it. So I'll bring my my skylight count from eight to eleven if I, if I'm able to pull this off. So um, it's helped me appreciate the the product. Um, okay, we have a question here. Do you know if the energy code in Ontario would be applicable to new skylights in exist in existing home in Ontario? Um, if you are replacing skylights, then no. If the skylight is a new cut, um, typically not, um, but you, you may need a permit to do a new cut. Um, in my experience, the SB12 requirements for renovation in Ontario, um, it's really when you're doing a bigger renovation. And it's, it's really from city to city whether you need a renovation for a skylight. Some cities required if you're doing any structural change, um, some cities require for any window, um, new window, whether you're changing the size of a window or adding a new window into the building structure, um, you would you may need to meet that requirement. Now in Ontario though, um, 
the Ontario Building Code is it didn't get updated, so the the government uh, um, decided not to update it. So we still have a maximum U value of two point eight for Part Nine projects, which is means most of our products still uh, still meet that. Um, there's a couple of our commercial products that may not, but for the most part, the uh, the residential and and a good part of the commercial products would meet that Part Nine, you know, SB twelve for Ontario energy requirements. So good question. Okay, any final remarks from you, Monica? I think this is the end of our, our four-week adventure uh, working with the REIC to put this series together. I know I, for one, am uh, looking forward to, to relaxing after this. This has been, uh, been a lot of fun pulling this content together and a lot of fun uh, figuring out how to keep the energy while looking at our computer screen. I'd much prefer to be in front of everybody, but... Uh, you know, these days, we got to get used to being in front of the computer screen. Yeah, no, I think this was great. If anyone does have any feedback, feel free to contact um, either Russell or I, and would love to keep the conversation going. Um, that would probably be my... All right. Well, you're still breaking up a little bit, Monica. I think we're going to have to buy you a new microphone before we do our next uh, series, just to be there safe. Been, yeah, there have been quite a few audio challenges. But... <laughs> oh, well, we'll open up the wall and get you a new microphone. We'll sort it out. So this is really great. Um, Pamela, thank you. Um, Pamela was here from the RIC helping us three of the four weeks, getting us set up um, before we went on. Thank you for that. Thank you for everyone for attending. Um, I echo what Monica said. Um, this is always a work in progress for us. Um, feedback um, would be wonderful, good or bad. Um, we're always trying to improve. I'm an engineer. Um, I, I'm presenting to, to architects most of the time, but as an engineer, sometimes um, I need that feedback because I can, uh, I can really go down the rabbit hole on energy. I try to hold back. Um, but of course, there's always a few architects that are happy to go down that, en down that energy rabbit hole with me. So thank you again, everyone. Um, I just see some uh, some comments about thanks coming up. Um, I don't see any further questions. So it's probably a good time to say have a, a lovely Friday and a, a very lovely weekend and be well, everyone. Thank you again, guys. It's been a great bunch of presentations. And of course, if anybody wants to review any of them, they're up on our YouTube channel. So this one should be up there shortly after, probably by next week. Um, but you'll be able to review all of them again. So thank you, everyone.